I'm Dr. Michael Mosley, and in this lesson you'll learn about the hormones that control your energy levels and appetite, from feelings of fullness to the odd insatiable craving, because let's face it, no one's immune from them. I'll also share some tips on how you can keep these hormones balanced and make them work to your advantage. First, let me introduce ghrelin. Now, ghrelin's job is to let you know when it's time to eat. This hunger hormone is produced in the gut when your stomach is empty. It then travels through your bloodstream to your brain, sounding the horn to eat. After you've eaten your meal, these ghrelin levels will decrease. But at the same time as the food passes out of your stomach and into your small intestine, it releases a separate hormone called PYY, which signals to your brain that you're full. Now that's why it's important to eat slowly, so you have time for the signal to be received before going overboard and say eating that second serving or moving on to the cheese platter when you really, really don't need it. Looking at the bigger picture, it's a bit more complicated than that because there's another key hormone that plays a role in controlling your appetite and that's leptin. Now leptin is primarily secreted in fat cells as well as the stomach. It travels from the gut to the brain and signals you have sufficient fuel in your energy stores. In this way, it reduces your appetite. In other words, its job in the long term is to regulate your energy balance, the amount of calories you eat and expand, and how much fat you store. Now you're probably thinking, wow, a hormone that decreases appetite, I'll order that by the bucket load. <laughs> Not so fast, because leptin is produced in fat cells. People who are obese tend to have higher levels of the hormone anyway. For some reason, the hormone signals don't work properly. Your brain stops listening with no drop in appetite. This is what is called leptin resistance. So now that we know what hunger hormones are, you might be wondering if there's a way of controlling them and reining in your appetite. Well, you can't control these hormones directly, but you can control certain behaviors that impact the way they work. The key areas to focus on are sleep, stress, and what you eat. Now, we all know that sugar has its enemies. This is particularly true when it comes to our hunger hormones. Whether it's a soft drink or a chocolate bar, sugar causes your blood sugar levels to rise. Now, this can feel great in the short term. However, high blood sugar levels are really bad for you. So your body then releases the hormone insulin to swiftly bring these blood sugar levels back to normal. It does this by cramming that excess sugar into muscle and fat cells to be used as energy. The result is a basic what goes up must come down effect and it often feels more like crashing down leading to more sugar and junk food cravings. To avoid this roller coaster of going up and down you should eat plenty of healthy fats like olive oil, oily fish and nuts, also plenty of healthy proteins such as chicken or tofu. When it comes to carbs choose fibrous foods, those that break down slowly like oats, grainy bread, legumes and veggies gradually releasing sugar into your bloodstream and avoid high GI foods like white bread and sweet treats. Beyond daily highs and lows, a diet high in sugar can also contribute to weight gain. That's because any unused energy generated during these sugar highs is stored as fat. Next time you're putting food on your fork, think about the effect that particular food will have on your body. Will it give you an energy slump or sustain you until your next meal? Do you find yourself craving sugary or fatty foods or just feel hungry after a bad night's sleep? There's a reason for that. Research has shown that when we have a bad night's sleep, our bodies produce significantly more ghrelin and less leptin than usual, resulting in greater food consumption. Sleep deprivation also affects the types of food we tend to crave. Low on sleep and you're more likely to reach for fatty and sugary treats, like that cake going around the office in the afternoon. You're also less likely to make reasoned food choices, making you much more vulnerable to these cravings or a binge. Getting enough sleep, seven to eight hours for most people, is one of the best things you can do to control and improve your hunger hormones and your health in a whole range of ways. Do you reach for comfort foods when you're feeling stressed? Just like sleep, chronic stress triggers a hormonal reaction that affects your appetite and your cravings. The key culprit here is the stress hormone cortisol. 
Cortisol prompts your liver to release sugar into your bloodstream. Just like eating that sugar-filled piece of cake, this release of sugar may cause your energy levels to spike and then drop, inducing more cravings for sugary, fatty foods. While short-term stress is a normal part of life and may not have an impact on your weight, long-term chronic stress can start to take a toll on your health. In fact, a number of studies have linked stress and obesity. Managing stress isn't always easy, but some things that have been shown to help include exercise and making time to relax and do the things you enjoy each day. So to wrap up, there are a number of key hormones that regulate your appetite. These include ghrelin, leptin and PYY. Some tell you when you're hungry and some tell you when you're full. Another hormone, insulin, controls your blood sugar levels and energy. And this in turn can influence your cravings and how energy is stored in cells around your body. These hormones play a huge but hidden role in controlling your weight and appetite. But there are simple things you can do to make them work for you. Aim to get a good night's sleep each night, make an effort to manage your stress levels, and swap those sugary, high GI foods like white bread and sweet treats for fibrous, low GI foods, which would include legumes and vegetables. Thanks for joining me for the Hunger Hormones course. Good luck with the quiz, and don't forget to check out the other great free courses on School of Better.